This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. You uh, hit up the casino last night. Yeah, I did. And you've noticed a trend. I never win, but if I'm with you, you will win. I am the good luck Chuck of gambling. But here's the thing. I have to put money in a machine As in well. order for you to win. Okay. I will lose it all immediately. You will hear the ding, 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 ding. You will be winning. So here's my plan. We'll start a GoFundMe. Okay. Lisa's gambling fund. And then people can hire me and I'll go out with them and they'll win. Okay, big. hold on. What's the GoFundMe for if people are for hiring? For my 20s that I lose. Well, what are they going to pay you when they hire you? Nothing. I just want... Oh, they so they can rent you for free. Yes, because I want to go. Okay, out, and you'll use the GoFund. This is a stupid idea, but they'll win big, Ryder. Yeah, it would yeah, be worth it for them to like put a little bit of money towards the GoFundMe. <laughs> yeah, I think you could skip the GoFundMe entirely and just get people who are going to gamble to hire you as well for you to throw twenties in mm. for them, and then they'll win with their money. Like, are you that good? How much are people winning? Like, are they doubling their money? Well, last night, I put in a 20. Christine, who works here at the station, she put in a 20 right beside me, and she hit one button and won 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it was my energy that brought the winnings on, because when she was gambling away from me at other machines, she was losing. Right. Okay, well. It seems to be a trend. It sounds like a decent plan, actually. You said that you only wanted to spend 20 last night. How did you find out how much they charge at the ATM machine there, then? Um, <laughs> busted. It was wild, I was looking at how much money was in someone else's bank account over their shoulder when they were oh, taking out money. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I definitely took out another 40 bucks, and that is also gone. Big spender. Oh, and I was, it was like in f- a five minute span. Yeah. That's the problem, too. Well, here's the thing as I said, some of these machines, there's so many now. Yeah. That you kind of get, um, you just don't understand what's overwhelmed going on. Overwhelmed a little. You get overwhelmed. Sure. I thought I was sitting down at a penny slot, and then I hit two buttons and the money was gone. I was like, well, how'd that happen? Did you hit the max bet button? Probably. Yeah. Well, so it doesn't sound like you're a very well practiced person either so like you, so you could anyone be looks good beside me you could be expensive to take you know i was talking to one of the managers there and she said there was a woman that came in and she wasn't even there to gamble she was there with her boyfriend for something she puts 20 bucks in a machine hits one button over a million dollars no I swear i'm not joking and you weren't with her I'm sure I was close in proximity. <laughs> I'm losing money somewhere. Close <laughs> by. I said it when I watched that Christmas movie with Lindsay Lohan in it that I think she's back. Oh, of course she's back. It she's... doesn't matter that the movie is a huge flaming pile of crap. Right. It's in a good way, though. Her comedic timing <laughs> yeah. was incredible. I was laughing out loud at some scenes. She's a great actress. Yep. Always yeah. has been. And uh, it's nice to see her back now. She's doing a new commercial that has people a little confused. Nice. Ooh, naughty. Pepsi and milk. Milk. Mmm, that is one dirty soda. Okay, first of all, her voice is so sexy. So So sexy. sexy. Like, I don't even care if she's smoking four packs of cigarettes a day. To get it that way? Yeah, it's like a young Kirstie Alley. No, but Mm. she's actually always just naturally had that raspy voice. Yeah, yeah. She was my biggest crush for a good stretch there. So it's good to see her back. Yeah, so it's a Pepsi commercial. And I thought it was really interesting when you said, is that a milk commercial? Because I go, why didn't they collab? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you collaborate with a milk company? Well, it feels for this? like, to be honest, we've talked about this numerous times on the show. Milk needs some help. Nobody, nobody that we know is just sitting around drinking glasses of milk anymore. And that used to be common practice. I don't think milk needs help though because of lattes and kids cereal. Very good point with so the lattes. It will yeah. always be a thing. We think about their advertising back in the day though. They were aggressive. Yeah. With the milk mustaches on all the celebrities. So that's yeah, that, why mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been surprised if this was a milk commercial. Whereas Pepsi doesn't feel like it needs as much help. Yeah, but. that's true. But I want to know people's thoughts on pilk. Yeah. Are you pro pilk? Because it it's a basically it's a virgin paralyzer. 
That's true. And, and I do think it would taste delicious. Do you have to, when there's no alcohol in it, also put the milk in second yes. so it doesn't curdle? Correct. Right. I would assume so. Yeah, I've never had a virgin paralyzer, but I could see them being good. That sounds like a dessert. Because, like, the vodka and Kahlua is pretty much, like, Coke, right? Yeah, kind Ish. of. Ish. As close as a liquor gets to Coke. Uh-huh. If you are big in the bar scene here in Edmonton, you probably know of a guy named Scott Dodds. He's bartended, like, everywhere. He's opening up a bar near Roger's Place soon. A tiki a bar. A tiki bar. So very excited about that. But I used to work with him in the bar industry, and like we would make paralyzers all the time. But we had another coworker. Her name was Rebecca. She said, it's impossible to get drunk off paralyzers. And Dodds goes, challenge accepted. She finishes her shift. She sits at the bar. He's like, I will pay for your drinks. I just want to prove to you, you can get drunk off paralyzers. She passed out on the bar. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. It, like They are a great drink if your stomach can handle it. Mm-hmm. If you can handle it. Yeah, I've got a paralyzer story I'll get into in a few minutes oh, here. Oh, it's my favorite story. Ryder uses this. <laughs> he tells this story in his stand-up act, and it I howl every time. I think it is the funniest story. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get to that. Uh, but also, where are you at with this milk and Pepsi combination yeah. drink thing? Here's the thing. Whatever Lindsay Lohan tells me to consume, I will. And that's why I'm kind of glad that I steered away when she was in her... <laughs> You yeah. know what? You know what phase? Right. Because if she were to tell me, you know, a little bit of this substance with and chase it with a Red Bull and some five cent candies, that would have been my diet. Ricky says it's good. You guys should try it. I've been doing it since I was a kid. That's what Tim said on the text line as well. I huh. mean, th- then there's other opinions like Taryn saying milk is so gross. We aren't meant to drink it as humans. Okay, kind of has a point in a sense. It is weird that we're drinking out of a cow, but also. Yeah, a liquid that's meant to turn calves into cows. A little bit weird that, like, an adult human would think that they need that. But and, I, I'm here for it. It's delicious. Andrew from St. Albert says, I drink milk every day and I get my kids to drink it as well. Because I do I do think that's how you're going to convince your kids to drink milk into their adulthood. Like, nobody's... Nobody's going to just start in their adulthood. Just adult, start huh? having right. a big glass of cold milk after a dinner if their parents didn't raise them on that. So you got to make sure you're mixing it right, too. Uh, the milk has to go in last uh, to stop the curdling. Pretty much a virgin paralyzer. Uh, paralyzer used to be my go-to drink for a, the, my first couple years of being a bar star. And I do feel like that was a thing <laughs> in the late 90s. Like Mike wrote in saying, I used to live on monkey's lunch. Mm. I just picture these bartenders in the late 90s having to be like, Yo, we need another four liter of milk back here. We're running low. Like they are just going through milk like crazy because people like you and Mike are coming in. Yeah, and you wouldn't put it on a gun. Like no, that, of course not. That so would it's get the come, tubes pretty it's gross. Gotta come out of the jugs. Yeah, and they were just pouring milk in the club like it was beer, <laughs> and then back into a jug because we'd all be drinking pony jugs because it's t- it tastes so good. Yeah, it doesn't taste like alcohol. Delicious. Uh, I would drink probably six liters of milk in a night. At this point in my life, I didn't realize I was lactose intolerant. I just thought alcohol maybe made me really gassy. You probably didn't even know what lactose intolerant meant at that point in your life. No, exactly. So I'd be walking around just kind of cramping up, talking to the ladies and just... (laughs) They thought you were leaning on the bar because you were trying to be sexy. (laughs) Really? You had like twisting pains in your gut right and like thank god they always played the music too loud because i'd just be crop dusting the entire bar honestly the bar is the best place to fart yeah nobody knows who did it right and like so what's up ladies (laughs) where are you girls from (laughs) the entire night that was i just walked around farting dancing farting drinking pony jugs getting the sore tummy you know, we're getting a lot of texts from people saying the Lindsay Lohan commercial makes sense because it's essentially like a melted float. float. Good point. Janice just wrote in, listen to this. If you're doing something along the lines of keto, get a high fat cream and pour it into a root beer. Is it Zevia? Yeah. Zevia? Zevia, yeah. And then it tastes like a float. Okay. That sounds. It actually sounds so really tasty. good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm drinking paralyzers no, tonight. I, I'm seriously going to the corner <laughs> store and I'm getting a four liter of milk tonight. I don't care. Sometimes businesses screw up, right? We all do. 
Oh, absolutely. Remember when we first drafted Connor McDavid and we were handing out free Connor McMuffins? Exactly. The next day, um, whoever it was that printed off all of the stickers that mm-hmm. we were putting on the McMuffins spelt Connor wrong. With an E. They spelt it C-O-N-N-E-R. And when we got the stickers, we were like, we have to we have to do something about this because pivot. it started to go viral. Mm-hmm. And everyone started calling us out for not knowing how to spell. spell. Oh, it was such a dumb mistake. It was so... Uh, it was such a little innocent mistake, mm. but it was a big deal. How about uh, the billboards that we got for the show that were promoting uh, Flower Shop Friday, an old segment we used to have on the program, mm-hmm. uh, and it they misspelled it to Flower Ship Fridays on the billboards. Yep, and it was like on all of the buses and so, yeah. LRT. Company screw up. We'll take it. Yeah, it we, happens to us. We too. took the heat. We even took the blame, even though it wasn't us that spelled <laughs> Connor wrong. But we were like, it's funnier to the listeners if we don't blame it on someone like <laughs> that they the don't scenes. know. Yeah. So we completely. You took the hit because you're we, a terrible speller. Actually, I'm a ver- spell restaurant right now. Okay, That's what I thought. coming up on the show, we want to hear times that you've had a company screw up. Maybe it was your company. Remember when your friend by accident ordered. Uh, like 15 bunches of bananas rather than just 15 bananas. Yep. (laughs) She didn't know what to do with them, so she loaded them up. She must have made a lot of smoothies. So it was one of those uh, click and collect. Right. So you go and you (laughs) wait in the parking lot, and then the employee starts loading in your groceries to the back of your vehicle. And she's watching this guy put one bundle of bananas in, another bundle. And then a box. Another (laughs) button. She's thinking to herself, oh, no. Something similar recently happened. A lady told the story on uh, TikTok and it took off. Check this out. So Whole Foods almost got me, you see. Uh, the PLU code for organic English cucumbers starts with 593. And the cashier rung me up for 593 of them and charged me for 593 cucumbers. I didn't realize until I was looking in my receipt in the car. And I was like, I didn't buy this much stuff. I didn't buy 644 items. Hmm. I did get my money back, though. That's good. Can you imagine even being the employee and being like, what do you mean I got to gather this many cucumbers? Yeah, it's like, do they own a Greek restaurant? Or trying how to much make, tzatziki are they trying, making? They're trying to make some pickles? Like, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, true. Good point. I mean, that that would make sense. Have you ever had an order go wrong? I feel wow. like you deal with this all the time. <laughs> Ryder has the worst luck. Okay, so as far as businesses screwing up, I'll just give you the Coles notes, but my uh, credit card got compromised. Somebody was using it in Florida. They caught it yep. and shut it, my credit card down. So great. That's great. It is, yeah, but now I got a new one, and so I have to get a hold of all the people that I have pre-authorized payments coming out and let them know about an, my new credit card. Well, my insurance company's like, no, sorry, we had to charge you $50 because the payment didn't go through. I was like, well, this wasn't my fault. And also, it's been four days. It's been four days. So they're like, okay, well, if you get a letter from the bank saying that, like, yes, your card was compromised, we'll waive the $50 fee. I was on hold this week for over five hours. All for 50 bucks. With RBC... Trying to get a letter, and then all they said when I finally got through to somebody was, we don't do that. <gasps> the what lady, a nightmare. The lady at Allstate said that they've gotten like four of them today. So they, For they, letters. They do do it. Anyway, just... If uh, anyone works for that bank, can you just write oof. up a letter for Ryder, please? Because 50 oh, oh. bucks... It doesn't seem like... Oh, that's a lot of money. Well, it was an ethical thing for me at this point, too. Absolutely. Like... I didn't deserve to have to pay that, so I didn't want to pay it. Uh, yeah, I, I almost swore at some strangers yesterday. I, I never do that. I like to take care of people in customer service, people in retail. Because it's not their fault. Usually. And even if it is, people make mistakes. Sure. But, uh, yeah, I was almost swearing. Uh, 780-784-7107. What is a story that you have about a company that screwed up or you screwed up an order of some sort? My dad, he has this like luck where he ordered this leather couch. This was years ago. And there was a little tiny thing wrong with it. Like they banged it against something. I don't know. It had something. But couches are leather couches are very expensive. Yeah, a lot so, of banging with couches. Yeah. Ryder. What? Like, you're bumping them into stuff, I mean. Sure. Yeah. So he calls the company. He's like, yeah, this is a thing. And they're like, we'll send you a brand new couch. So the guys come. They drop off the couch. They don't take the old one back. So my dad just got a free... Matching. Matching? <laughs> yeah. Leather couch. Yeah, he must have been pumped. And you know my dad. 
You've met him. Yeah. The guy loves a good deal. Oh. So he talked about that story for months. Bogo coaches. You don't hear those much. Bogo, baby. You were saying in your bartending days, Lisa, it was uh, something that happened quite a bit around there. Yes. Has anyone been out for dinner or whatever and you go to order a Caesar drink and you're like, what's taking so long? And then someone brings you a Caesar salad. <laughs> it's such it's a so common funny. mistake. Oh, it's so funny. It's common? Oh, Yeah. Well, though, who orders a salad when they sit down and not a drink, well, though? Well, exa- that's very true. And also, if you're ordering a Caesar salad, you got to upsell with adding chicken. And you would say salad, wouldn't you? Like, if you're ordering a Caesar salad, you wouldn't just say, oh, you have a Caesar? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, you're so probably So you probably, right. it sounds like you just worked with some dumb people, maybe. No, maybe it was me that did it. Oh, I didn't mean that then. Hey, what's up? I was sorry for your company screw up. Yeah. Uh, my dad is a snowbird, so he lives in Arizona half the year. And one of the grocery stores was having a sale for, like, bottles of whiskey for $20. So he grabbed a case off the shelf, and it was still sealed. And the cashier rang in one bottle and charged him $20 for six in the case. And he was like, start the car! And ran out the door. <laughs> that is the best. Yeah. What a dummy. Like, no offense twice. to the employee, but like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, it happened twice. Twice? He did that the next day, too. He was like, let's see if I could do it again. And I would have went did. back every Your day. Your dad is my hero. Let's try this again. <laughs> Yeah, but like, the worst that's going to happen is going to charge you for all six that time, and then you still got five free. <laughs> this text from Lindsay says, I recently made a Sephora order. My box came with just paper stuffing inside. They forgot to put my order in the box. <laughs> that happened to me the other day. I went to get a coffee, and I was like, there's no actual like shots of coffee in this. It's just milk. Just hot milk. <laughs> so you know how McDonald's on your coffees, you get those stickers, and then you fill out a sticker card, right? Yeah. So... We filled out two sticker cards, my husband and I, and we went through the McDonald's drive through about once a week for at least six weeks <laughs> using the same sticker card to get two free copies. Unbelievable. Was, like the first person thought the second person was taking the card, but they never took our cards and we just kept using them. <laughs> I wonder how many people <laughs> at that McDonald's were getting free that coffees so during that stretch. Because, I mean, a lot of people probably wouldn't have had their cards taken. No. Exactly. It, we were pretty sad the day someone finally took our cards. Ah, you know, it's a good stretch while it lasted. <laughs> yeah, you were on a hot one. Good while it lasted. Good thank, while it lasted. Thanks, Haley. Have a great day. <laughs> thank you, too. That is so great. That reminds me of the story of the McDonald's employee that quit and then confessed years later. He's like, every time I did a nug- nugget order, I put an extra nugget in. Like, it was just trying to spread some joy. Yeah. You got a six piece, you're getting a seventh. Do you remember the uh, stickers at Subway? Back in the day? Kind of. Kind of. I didn't frequent Subway a lot. They were the best. I think if you got, you got two stickers for a foot long, and as soon as you got 10, you got a free sub. Everybody was in on it. Everybody enjoyed this promotion until staff realized they could sell the rolls of them, of the stickers. I feel like I've heard this story before. Yeah, online. It was like right at the start of internet and, and like then it craigslist it. or kijiji or whatever it ruined it for everyone yep and now that deal is not a thing and hasn't been for 25 years but th- that was a good stretch too so tell us about a time that a company screwed up your order or you screwed up and you ended up like winning in the end um this one here from sarah <laughs> says ordered a one night stand got a baby daddy <laughs> Okay. Uh, And this says, I once ordered two McDavid jerseys from NHL.com for Christmas. It was around 400 bucks. They tried to deliver, and it ended up going back to the distributor. I snapped, got a full refund, said they ruined my Christmas, really tried to be dramatic about it. Package showed up the next day, never got charged. What? Couple free McDavid jerseys. Not a bad deal. But also, this is kind of inspiring people to go out there and be a Karen. Yeah, that's true. To get true. what you want. It doesn't always work that way. So this is one of those very few and far between stories. My buddy had, uh, his dad had a hockey story that this kind of reminded me of, where back in the day they used to have Eastern aluminum sticks, like the Gretzky silver ones. Yeah. And then you'd put, you'd get a blade as well and you'd have to put the blade in. The only reason I know this is because you always bring it up when we go to play it again sports. You're like, oh. You got any Eastern aluminum? Every single time. Otherwise, I would have no idea what you're talking about right now. So anyway, continue. Yeah. So uh, my buddy's dad was getting him an Easton aluminum. He was the first on the team to have it. It was a big Whoa, deal. Oh, that is a big deal. And then they had just scanned the price of the blade, which was like 15 bucks. <gasps> 
And so he got the full like hundred and fifty dollar stick with the for fifteen bucks. That's legendary I'm stuff, right? Pretty there. sure the dad went back the next day in that situation too. <laughs> what is it with dads that go back trying to get the same deal again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. We've noticed a trend over the years that this time of year the negative attitude directed to us amplifies a little bit occasionally. Yeah, we prepare for it now. Just like, hey, it's December. Just be ready for some like hate tweets and yeah, hate comments. I, I think it's it is it's just a common thing this time of year. People are starting to get fed up with their jobs mm, or maybe the cold. they don't like the holiday cheer. It's not really their vibe. So they take it out on other people and lots of times it's directed towards people in the media, which is yeah. I guess a way for people to feel better to about vent? themselves. I don't know. Sure. So we're going to have a little uh, competition here. Yeah, because it's already happened. Like December 1st, yesterday, the yeah. first day of the month, both of us got a hateful comment on social media. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to see whose you think is more hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to vote. That's coming up. I actually try to have a lot of empathy for people that take time out of their day to say really mean things towards me because they're clearly going through something. I try to find like the comedy in the chirps. Okay. That's how I am able to process it. I grew up around uh, just a group of guys and all we would do is make fun of each other to mm -hmm. the point that like outside people would be like, wow, you guys are awful. But you love each other. <clears throat> Very and, much. And you have this idea where when people are chirping us in the comments, you like to kind of calm my mind by saying, well, they probably listen to us and they know that we can take That's, some chirps because we we chirp each other so they feel like they can get in on absolutely. it. Absolutely. So that helps me not take it too personally as well. Like the one time I got uh, a comment that said, I want to hit this guy in the face with a dirty diaper. And to me, I was like, wow, that is an epic chirp. <laughs> and then I like put that chirp in my pocket and I'll occasionally use it now. So I, I thank that guy for saying that to me. But also at the same time, I do, I never want to advocate for bullying online. It's so, it can be so, Ugh, it's so an bad. Ugly, ugly part of the internet for sure. Yeah. So Ryder and I are both going to read the first chirp that we've gotten in December, in, the, in December, tis this is, and you let us know on the text line, what do you want to say here? Which one's worse or which one's funnier? What angle do you want to go, Ryder? Do you want people to vote that Just, it's, a, it's a a better chirp? Harsher. Harsher. Yeah. Okay. So this morning I posted a, well, yesterday, but and then again this morning, a video of me trying on all of my new glasses that I just got in the mail. You're using up your benefits. I had to. Before the end of the year. It was Just actually to... a PSA letting you know, you know, the year's wrapping up. If yeah, you yeah. haven't used that money. Get that massage or whatever. Do what you got to do. Get it in now. So I just asked which pair of glasses are your favorite. This one comment. They're all underwhelming. <laughs> ah! <laughs> they wrote. There were six pairs. How could six. they all be underwhelming? I tried on six pairs. They said they are all underwhelming. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just giving an honest opinion. Okay. And I read that and I went, you know what? This comment actually made my day. Mm -hmm. How hilarious is that? Out of well, anything you could have commented or you could keep scrolling, well, they went out of, of their way to be like, they all suck. Right. <laughs> your style sucks. The fact that there are six and they don't like any of them must mean they just don't like your face, I though, right? I think that's right? exactly it. Yeah. The nose doesn't work with the glasses. <laughs> I think they look great. The ones you picked today. Thank you. They're awesome. Okay, so mine. I, I did post that on Play 107 YEG, so go take a look for yourself, and then you can giggle knowing that someone's like, those are all terrible. <laughs> I, I like underwhelming. <laughs> Good word. Okay. Okay, so I posted uh, yesterday on TikTok, and I got this ridiculous tattoo. So I had a leg growth. I went to the dermatologist to get it removed. He's it, like, it'll it just grow like back. It looks like a pimple, like a hard. Or like a nipple. Yeah, almost. sure. And so I said, like, he said, it's going to grow back bigger if I remove it. So I said, can I get it tattooed? And he was like, I guess. And so I got like a little gnome. You know, those gnomes that have like the button nose. Yeah. You can't see their eyes. It's just the hat and then the cute little round nose and, and the then, beard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the nose is the bump on my leg. Uh, and that's what I got that tattoo. Hilarious. This summer. Yeah. So I posted it on like, you know, Facebook and, and Twitter mm -hmm. and it, it got a lot of interest. 
Uh, like people, I think, found it pretty ridiculous and, and funny. Well, and sometimes you want to post on several social media accounts because there's some people that only have Twitter or mm-hmm. they only have Facebook. So I was also waiting on TikTok for uh, a trend to start. And I figured at some point I'm going to see, like, show me your ugliest tattoo or show me your most ridiculous tattoo. And then I could post there. So I had never posted on TikTok about it before. And I got fed up with waiting. So you tried to start the trend. So I tried to start the trend and just, you know, told the story. Matt writes, <laughs> How many times are you going to post about this stupid tattoo on Twitter <laughs> or on here? <laughs> Nobody cares. Come up with something new, idiot. Ooh. Ooh. I, no, I threw in the idiot part. I just wanted to win the contest against Friar. you. <laughs> cheating. <laughs> Sorry. I love that you want to win and the witch <laughs> chirp is more mean. There is a local story that's just starting to circulate. I think this thing's going to end up being a worldwide story because it is so cute. Yeah, it is. If you're an animal lover, I think you'll really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. There is a local dog here in Edmonton that just got a job at an Edmonton office. And when I say job... Legit. Like, goes in for shift work. Okay, so... Sully is a four-year-old Cocker Spaniel poodle, and his owner, Meg McLean, said that Suffy, uh, sorry, Sully suffers from separation anxiety, Okay, and it was affecting his quality of life. So she had a really hard time leaving the dog in the morning because when they would close the door, they could hear him crying, like okay. nonstop. You could hear it like several doors down, so they tried to find a solution, and she just said it was a shot in the dark. I put a post up on Reddit asking if anyone was interested in having an office dog. Because we always joked it would be the perfect job for him because he would just go office to office visiting people. Right. Overwhelming response here in Edmonton. Of businesses that yep. were willing to take on a, a full-time employee. Mm-hmm. So we're talking tattoo parlors, cannabis shops, mm-hmm. several people. Some she, cool jobs. She ended up going with a place <laughs> because it's only five minutes down the road from their house. And it's a consulting uh, company, a small consulting company that has like soil specialists. Okay. So one of the women that work there, her name's Stephanie, said, you know, yeah, I already bring my dog to work. Drop your dog off every day. So Sully is working at this office. Gets dropped off in the morning, yep. gets picked up on the way home. That's exactly it. And there's photos of Sully living their best life on the floor in an office on a bed. Just relax. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm like, I want my dog to have a job. Right. This should be a thing. Yeah, this is... Everyone should be dropping their dog (laughs) off at a place of work, even if it's not your own. It is too bad that allergies are a thing. Or else I think a lot more companies would be open to letting people bring their dogs to work. And that's the life. Uh Uh-huh. I feel like Gordon and Stanley would be the perfect office dogs. Mm -hmm. Because they don't jump up. They barely bark. They just want to snuggle and nap. And they would bring people joy. So if anyone else is hiring, we've got two hand <laughs> yeah, we dogs. got a couple of resumes. Yeah. Does he have a lunch every day? Oh, like, absolutely. I, I bet really, there's a lunch kit. I really hope they pack in a lunch kit. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's my play, heart. Play 107. Good morning. It just seems like Elon Musk is spending the majority of his time kind of arguing with people on Twitter now that he owns it. Yeah, he's definitely having fun with it. I don't understand that somebody who has that much money and could actively choose to do whatever they want with it is choosing to go on the internet and argue with strangers Hmm. and like try to one up people. Like he just seems like he's kind of being petty and trying to win arguments, calling people out if they have like things that have some misinformation in them about him. And I get wanting to protect your image, but also. If you have that much money, why aren't you just, like, playing beach volleyball with a bunch of Italian models and, like, robots? <laughs> That's not what brings him joy. That brings everyone joy. Not him. You could have, like, a waterfall of pina colada beside you. I don't know. I just think that the... <laughs> what do you think Elon Musk asks for for Christmas? Yeah, I, like I don't. What do you even want? What do you need? What do you? What do you like at that point? Honestly, a volleyball court. I'm back to my plan. That is, if you had endless amounts of money, I, I don't know. So you think he's just sitting on his phone all day? Yeah, he's just chirping people. It, it on sure seems to be. I don't know. I've never understood that with that kind of wealth. Well, I would love to be a fly on the wall 
for a day at work with Elon Musk. I wonder if people deliver him his favorite drinks all day and he just sits in like a big throne. How does it work? Or is he on the throne while he's That's writing I mean. all these mean messages? That's what I mean. Like, is he on a throne? No, no, it, I mean like the toilet. Like the rest of us where we do all of our Twittering. <laughs> The Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Play 107.